Ready to go. Frank, it's moving day. Let me bring you guys up to speed with where we're at with Frank's tank now. You guys will remember a few months ago I built this aquarium. It's 100 gallons. It's four feet long, two feet wide, and stands 20 inches tall. I built it out of three quarter inch cell cast acrylic and I built it as a grow out tank for my freshwater stingrays when we initially got them. To cover the tank, I went with some polycarbonate greenhouse roofing. I've been using this for several years now. Very cheap, indestructible, clear see-through. You know, you can't go wrong with it. It's just kind of ugly. Uh, I had a spare AI Prime HD light. That's the only light on this aquarium, lighting the whole thing. I told you these could light four foot tanks. Uh, the stand, also built myself, just a do-it-yourself stand. Made of two by fours, uh, costs 15, 20 bucks. And then of course for filtration, I just used a spare canister filter that I already had on hand. I thought, why not go ahead and use it? In order to make sure it was cycled though, I did this. As you guys know, I always have some pre-cycled media. I've got blocks, balls, all kinds of biological media already pre-cycled in my 2,000 gallon sump filtration simply so I can start up an aquarium at any given point. So I just took a bunch of cycled media, tossed it in the canister filter. Now Frank is a relatively big fish. He's gonna grow to be about, oh I don't know, 10 inches in length, which isn't that long for a big cichlid like this. Not all flower horn actually grow to be the same uh, size either, which is something you need to consider depending on their genes and their types. Short body flower horns don't get that big. But some flower horns get to 14 inches, for example, but most will get to about eight to 10 inches and they are very thick, a lot of girth to these guys. The bicher, on the other hand, will probably get to about 16, 18 inches total. And these two will be fine in the 100 gallon for life. So let's go ahead and get him out of here. I don't know who should we, we should move first. Probably going to be uh, the bicher. Bichers are typically a little more difficult to catch simply because they can be so wiry. So if I start putting the net in, causing some commotion with Frank, the bicher is definitely not gonna wanna be netted. I don't have a lot of room to work with here either, uh, and the bicher knows I'm coming, so. Uh, I like to typically lower the water level in these tanks before I catch fish, but this is gonna be just fine. So, like I said, the bicher is a little wiry. He doesn't wanna get caught, I can't blame him. I wouldn't want to get netted either. And we got him there. He's good. Well, the bicer will jump if you give him the opportunity to. So you have to bend the net to get him out of here. Wiry little guy. Oh, we've got them. The bicer as of right now might be about eight or 10 inches. And there he goes. Now, of course, the question is going to be, am I going to add in decorations into the aquarium? Short answer is probably not. Uh, big fish, in aquariums tend to get injured on decorations. These guys don't necessarily need to hide either. Uh, the bicer will be fine with the sand. The sand's in there for him more than it is for Frank. A lot of the times, if you wanna keep a flower horn, best practices is in a bare aquarium. Frank's next. He doesn't look happy. Frank will forgive me though. He always has. But this guy is a big fish. He's a lot bigger than people think. And he's very strong. He's gonna put his hips into it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Frank. Going into the net, my friend. He's gonna splash a little bit, cause some commotion. That's okay. Squeeze the net to make sure he can't get out. 
So into the net you're going to go, into the tank you're going to go, Frank. Water parameters in both aquariums match, so the temperatures are the same. These guys should just go right back to acting completely normal. Frank looks absolutely stunning in this tank. I think he's going to like it long term. Mainly because he's going to get all kinds of attention here now. He's front row and center just how he wants to be. While we wait for Frank to adjust though, let's take a look at the 2000 gallon. Quick update on that. It is doing absolutely phenomenal. All the fish are settling in. Uh, the rays are enjoying the aquarium. Here's a quick uh, idea the Frank, uh, the, the rays are exploring the roots. They're going in and under them, over them. If you follow me on Instagram, I was posting videos of the rays swimming over the roots, which was absolutely stunning. I love it when they do that. Uh, arowana, all getting along, all doing splendidly together. Nobody having any issues at all. Look at the little ray, the little pearl scaling the wall over there. She's doing well. And the big pearl. Everybody's doing fine. Let's take a look from the other side here. So again, everybody doing fine. Uh, oh, little Pearl making an appearance. Hey everybody, <laughs> I'm loving it. Thanks for my new home. <laughs> uh, one of the uh, black diamonds there. These guys go throughout the entire aquarium. They're enjoying it. It's entirely more natural than anything I've ever created previously. And you know, with big fish and big aquariums, I tend not to want to have decorations. You guys have seen what happened with Buddy. I did my best to, you know, kind of decorate that aquarium. Um, but in the end, you know, accidents happen. And I've said it time and time again, you know, it's not a good idea to have decorations in an aquarium with really big fish, unless it's something like this. There's nothing really for the arowana to get hurt on. There's nothing for the, uh, the rays to get hurt on, yet the tank is scaped. Of course, I still wanna add in some plants um, into the corners here. I wanna add in some giant fowl, but you know, it must be said that I don't have access to absolutely everything at any given point. I have to wait, I have to order things in, just like you guys. I, I, I'm, on no, I'm on no different level than you guys when it comes to trying to access things. But there is one last thing that I am entirely excited about that I wanna take a moment to tell you. In just two weeks in Aurora, Colorado, I will be giving a very intimate presentation at Aquatic Kingdoms. On February 24th at around 6 p.m. is when this is going to start. It'll be at Aqu Aquatic Kingdoms Aquariums. I'm going to leave details and links in the description below so you can get everything you need to, uh, in order to attend. With that said, I'm calling it an intimate event simply because it's limited seats. It's not necessarily open to the public. Everybody can come. I've done that before and hundreds and hundreds of people show up and there's just not enough space. I've always wanted to do something where uh, I could have more meaningful conversations with the people that come. And Jason from Aquatic Kingdom said, why don't we hold something at my store where there's limited seating? We're talking like 50 seats or something like that. Do a ticketed event. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this event because it's something different, something I've never done. And, and it's going to be something like having a little get together with a bunch of friends where we can actually have conversations. If you've ever gone to the bigger events where uh, there's hundreds of people, a lot of the times you only have maybe five, 10 seconds with me, get a picture, we shake hands, and there's a big lineup of people wanting to do that. So there's not a lot of interaction, not a lot of meaningful conversation to be had. So this is the event that we're going to make it happen. I hope to see many of you there. Oh, and by the way, uh, we have Frank and Stein. <laughs> Frank and Stein. We now have a spare empty aquarium. What do we do with it? 